Hello, my name is Amina from the Digital Skills team and in this short introductory video to Wimber Create I'm going to show you how to take this Word document and within about 10 minutes turn it into an interactive Wimber Create package that looks something like this. So down the left hand side you can see you've got different sections and pages for navigation and your content is all nicely formatted, um, nicely spaced, you've got little interactive questions and there's a flashcard down here and then up in the top right hand corner you've got buttons to be able to move between the pages or the middle one will take you back to the navigation page, sorry, back to the index page. Okay, so to get started open the Word document that you're going to work on. You have to enable macros on the document and you also have to have Wimber Create installed on your machine. You'll know whether Wimber Create is installed because when you go to the add-ins tab at the top of the screen you will see a little Wimber Create button. Drop the arrow down and choose Start Wimber Create. Once Wimber has opened, you'll see uh, a little Wimber Create win window pop up and you just click on OK. Before you go any further, I recommend that you save your document as a separate copy. So use Save As and maybe add Wimber to the end of it because the next steps involve changing the formatting and if your document already looks nice then you want to maintain that so save it as and we'll work on a different copy. Wimber Create works using styles within Word so go to the home tab at the top and then you need to open the styles box using this tiny little arrow on the styles section. Now when Wimber Create generates a document, that's the last thing that we're going to do. It strips out all of the existing formatting in Word. So it's often easier to start from an unformatted document. So a way to clear all the formatting on a document is to select all of the text in it. I'm going to use Control and A to select all the text. You could highlight it all using the mouse if you wanted to. And then at the top of the list of styles in the Styles window, just click on Clear All. So what this does is to strip out any formatting that was already on the text. So any bold, any italics, any headings, all that's been stripped out and everything is now just normal text. The next step is to mark up the document using the Wimber Create styles. Just be aware that when you do finally at the end generate your Wimber Create package, it doesn't matter about the spacing in the document. Wimber Create will make everything uh, standardized for you. So if you want to put in some extra spaces before lines and things, that's probably a good idea um, when using the Wimber Create styles. You'll see what I mean in a second. So just to have a look at a finished Wimber Create package for a second, on the menu you've got main headings. These are sections and then underneath sections you've got pages and in this example there's one heading sorry there's one section here and then two pages underneath it so that's what we're going to start doing in the document now so to pick out this first heading I'd advise you to just make sure there's an empty line underneath it just so that you don't catch more of the empty space than you need put your cursor anywhere on the heading you don't have to highlight it and then on the styles you're going to choose CG section title. So CG is left over from when, when Wimber Creates used to be Course Genie and section title obviously is telling Word that this is going to head up a section when you generate the package. And as you can see, when you make it a section title, it gets an orange background. So as you look through your document, you can see exactly where your sections are going to start. So the next thing I've done is to find the first page title. So that will sit within the first section. Um, I've created a little bit of space around it just by pressing enter to put some extra lines in. 
I've clicked on it, haven't highlighted it, and then I've chosen CG page title from the list of styles. And I've done the same thing with the next page, I've created a little bit of space around it, clicked within the text, not highlighted it, and from the styles chosen CG page title again. So I've also added some bulleted text and Wimbercrate would recognize bold text within a paragraph. Now I want to add some little interactive formative assessment questions just to check people have understand what I've been sort of discussing in this document so far. So the first thing I do is to put the cursor in where I want the first question to go. Now, if you go to the add-ins tab, you'll see all the different Wimbercreate tools on the toolbar at the top. I'm going to add a multiple choice question. Now, I'm not going to discuss each of these different options on the menu during this video, but to give you an example, there are two multiple choice here. Well, there's a true false question as well, but the first multiple choice answer is one where you tell Wimbercreate which is the right answer and which is the wrong answer. Whereas the second multiple choice, there's no right or wrong answer. So the user simply chooses an option that fits them best and then gets feedback on the option they've chosen. So there are subtle differences between each of the different question types. Remember that none of the answers that the user gives are stored. This is purely formative. It's to give them some feedback on how they're doing, how they've interpreted things, or even, as I'm going to use it here, on their personal choice, if you like. Now, once you've chosen your interactive tool, uh, all of these windows will look quite similar. So the first thing you do is put your question title in. You simply type it into the boxes, and then any question instructions. You've also got tabs for your answers and feedback. So type in some of your answers. You can put up to six in here. You don't have to put six. You can leave some empty and they won't show up. If this was the first type of multiple choice, I'd be asked to tick the radio button to tell me to tell Wimber Create which is the correct answer. And with this particular type of multiple choice, you give feedback for each answer that the student could have given. And then when you've put all your feedback in, you click on OK. And what that does is to put a box into your document, which is a Wimber Create question box. And you can see all the text that you've typed in there. If you wanted to make any changes, you could actually just type into that box. Or alternatively, you can click within the box. And up at the screen, you can choose question and edit and that will open up the window that you typed into earlier. Okay, so there we added a question which appears in the text. Other things that you can do. To make some of the text stand out within your document, you can use some of the other uh, CG styles on the styles list. So for example here, I've picked out the yellow text as CG quote style and the grey text as CG panel style. So when the document is generated at the end, those bits of text will just stand out from the rest of it. I'd say be consistent through the document. So for example, say, right, I'm going to use the quote style for all quotes, and I'm going to use the panel style for all tips. So just to confuse you, I'm now going to go back to the add-ins tab, and I'm going to add some more interaction. So I've created some more space in my document just underneath the question that I asked earlier and I'm going to add a flashcard. Now this is a really nice little tool in Wimber Create. So from the interaction tab, drop the menu down and choose flashcard. So with the flashcard tool, the box pops into the document straight away and you can type straight into the box. So on the front, in this column, you type in what you'd like to be on the front of the card and then 
the user clicks on a button, flips the card over, and you type in what you'd like to appear on the back of the card. Now, this is great because users can work through a list, they can work through all of the flip cards, and once they know a flip card, they can drop it from the list. So it's a really nice little tool. OK, you'll notice on the documents now that I've been through and added another section heading, and there's also another section heading below this as well. Now I've finished, and I'm ready to start generating my document. Before you generate it, you need to think about the metadata, so the hidden information that's attached to the, to the package when it's generated, so that if you drop it into, say, an open educational um, resource collection, then this is what people would be able to use to search for it. So up at the top, if you click on the Wimber Create menu and choose Metadata, you'll see the three metadata tabs that you need to consider. So the first thing is a title, which is going to appear at the top of the document, um, and a description, and any keywords that you'd like to be searchable. Like I said, if you use this in some sort of open educational um, resources collection. It's useful to use the life cycle tab for version control, for marking yourself as the author, um, and belonging that this this material belongs to the University of Salford. You can also date it as well. And then when you get to the rights tab, you've got to consider things like copyright. Now, if you're using if you're making this available to people, then it's a good idea to fill in the copyright description. And this is where you can refer to the Creative Commons um, website where you can choose the copyright and what you'd like people to be able to do with this document. So do you want people to be able to download it, use it, um, use it for profit or just not for profit? Should people be able to change it? If they change it, do they have to make their version available for other people to use? So there's a few things to think about with the copyright, but Creative Commons is the best place to start. And once you've worked through those settings and clicked on OK, you'll see a little metadata box appear at the top. Now, this is a box, unlike the question boxes, you shouldn't edit this box by typing into it directly. If you need to edit anything in the box, go back to the uh, metadata tab that you're on earlier. The next thing you need to think about are the settings. So again, from the Wimber Create menu, this time choose Settings. So the first tab you see is the General tab. Now the page root, that's how all the files are going to be named. So you can change that to something that's, um, that's right for your document. Then the footer is going to appear at the bot sorry, at the bottom, <laughs> the bot, of every page. So you can add, you know, copyright University of Salford, you can put the name of the document in, you can put your name in, whatever's appropriate. The scheme, there are several schemes built into Wimber Create, but in HR development, we've created our own scheme, which uses the university colours, the university logo, and actually just looks much nicer. So drop down the list under Scheme and look for HRD. If you can't see it, contact the Digital Skills team and they can help um, add it to your, to your list. Wimber Create does a lot for accessibility. For example, if you put a table into your document, then tell Wimber Create what are your row headings and which are your column headings using the CG styles again. Equally, if you put images in, think about putting alternative descriptions on so a screen reader can read out to somebody what the image shows. So before your document is generated, you could have Wimber Create do an accessibility check for you. On the navigation tab, you can choose how you want your generated package to look. So an index page is a first screen that lists all your sections and all your pages. Navigation column is down the left hand side and you can choose whether it shows your sections, just your pages and you can choose how wide it is as well. So this depends how long your document is and how many sections and pages you've got. 
If there are not many pages and not many sections, you might want to show them all on the navigation column. But if it's quite a complicated one, you might just want to show the sections and then the pages expand once the user's within that section. Just remember, if you're dropping this into Blackboard, you don't want to have a really wide navigation column because then on the screen the student will see the Blackboard navigation, then they'll see a Wimber Create navigation, and then they'll only have a small part of the screen left for the actual content. And finally, you choose what type of content package you would like Wimber to create Wimber to create for you. So if you're going to drop this into Blackboard, you can choose the Blackboard package, but the normal HTML pages would also work within Blackboard and they would be a more appropriate option if you're actually going to put this onto web pages. Okay, we're getting towards the end now. You have been through the metadata and you've been through the settings for your document. You need to save it before you generate it. So save it again now. And then back on the add-ins tab, go back to the Wimber Create menu, and this time choose Generate Course. First, before it generates, it will ask you where you'd like to save the generated package. It's probably a good idea to put it next to the Wimber document, um, the place where you saved the Word, Wimber version of the Word document earlier. So if everything's well formed, Wimber will go ahead and generate your document and it will open up a little window that you need to close once it's done that and there's a little tick box to preview it in a browser. If that's ticked, the next thing it's going to do is open up a web page for you to have a look at what you've done. Okay, so it's opened up for me in a web browser to view what I've done and in this particular browser I need to enable some of the content. Browsers will differ. So in this version of Internet Explorer, I just click on the flashing bar and allow the blocked content. So this is the package that I've created. At the top, you can see the title that I put into the metadata box. And this is my index page, which has got the sections and the pages that I put into the document before in. And I can click on any of these to move straight to that section or page. So you can see I'm in one of the pages now and at the top I've got navigation buttons to the right to the left and that's backwards and forwards and the middle button moves me back to the navigation um, to the sorry to the index page and then I've also this is the page I've got the questions on so there's the question the multiple choice and below that is the flashcard. Now what will often happen at this point as you go through is that you'll notice things you think oh, I wish I'd made that a page or I wish I'd made that bold or that question's got a typo in it. It's not unusual to have to go back to the Wimber create document and edit it. If you're going to do that I would recommend that you delete the packages that it generated for you. So go back and delete the folder or the zip folder it generated for you and go back to the Word document, make any changes, and then generate again. That just helps you with version control. Otherwise, if you don't delete things, it can get a little bit hard to manage.